yeah. and underneath, and then to swim in. Yeah. And then it goes on down, and it, it, like I said, it, and it repeats almost the 22nd chapter, excuse me, of a revelation. So that's something we're pressing toward. Well, if you know what it is, Sister Marlo, in the uh, 47th chapter of Ezekiel, he measures four times. Right. Each one a thousand cubits. Right. Each one a thousand years. So he measures from Adam. He measures from Adam to the day of Pentecost. He measures from that. Uh, from Adam uh, to the day of, of Pentecost is where he measures. And um, he said, the scripture said, uh, when he measured a thousand in Ezekiel uh, 47 and 5, afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. This river now on the day of Pentecost had become a river it wasn't to the ankle as it was in the days of Abel. It wasn't to the knees as it was in the days of Noah. And it wasn't up to the loins as it was in the time of Abraham and Moses and Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. It was now a river <clears throat> for a thousand years, able to Christ. It was a river now, and it was poured out, it broke open, broke over the levee of man's flesh, man's sins, man's ignorance, and it spilled out toward the east country, or toward the uh, garden of God, and it was a river, and they couldn't pass over it. There was no way that man could ignore it. He could not any longer deny the Holy Ghost. He couldn't deny the working of the Spirit uh, in the earth. It was in the earth. It was a witness. It was a river that couldn't pass over. Then, as you said, then in verse 7, it is like Revelations 22. The bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. Now, now we're into the millennium of Christ into the thousand years where there's pure river of water of life flowing clear as crystal and on either in the midst of it or either side of it is the 12 trees and the leaves of these trees bearing 12 manners of fruit 12 apostles and the leaves of this tree now uh, is for the healing of the nations so now the testimony of the tree of life, the leaves. See, I want some leaves on my tree. If I have the tree of life in me, the tree of life should have fruit and leaves. And leaves is your testimony. We're overcomers by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the, of the Lamb. You show me a person that sits in the church for a lifetime and they have no testimony in their life of being righteous, of striving to be godly, of letting charity be in their life, of letting the fruits of the Spirit develop, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, mercy, meekness, temperance. Galatians 5, and 22, Galatians 5 and 22. And I'll show you a person that will not be a tree of life. They won't be an overcomer. Because an overcomer is known by the blood of the Lamb. And blood purifies. The blood of the Lamb sanctifies. The blood of the Lamb cleanses. You show me a person that stays in the church and they retrogress, they go backwards. They lose their testimony, they lose their zeal, they lose their desire, they lose their joy, they lose their peace, they lose their want to, they lose their urge. And I'll show you a person 
that will not be an overcomer because they have no testimony and therefore they're a tree of life because Christ is in them but they don't have any leaves so they don't have any fruit. What happened to the tree, the fig tree? Remember? What happened to the fig tree? It withered and died. Why did it wither and die though? Why did, what, what happened to that tree? Because it had no fruit. It had no fruit. Jesus came by and it couldn't find any fruit on that tree. And you know he wouldn't have looked for fruit if it had not been a fruit bearing season. If it had not been a fruit bearing season, he would have not looked for fruit. It's a fruit bearing season right now. The word of God is coming forth. We've got an order in this church that is New Testament order. It's a school. It's a place where you can learn. It's a place where you can be fed. There's a ministry here feeding this church three, four, five times a week. Uh, there's no excuse. This, this church it should not be a barren tree. It should not be without fruit because uh, this is a season for it, a time for it. And it ought to be bringing forth fruit and have leaves on it because a tree without leaves is not a healthy tree. Not, and, but the leaves of that tree were for the healing of the nations. And uh, this, the, you know, so these lessons now, and I I'm, I'm see some of the choir coming in, so I'm going to give way to tomorrow in the choir. But uh, if you're with me from the very time I started tonight, you know that I painted you a picture and I gave you many scriptures to study, to consider. The, the word is precious. Uh, I don't have time to take up Exodus 16, but we will. And here's another example of a householder going back in his treasure and bringing forth things old and new. Because in Exodus 16, he deals with a picture of the manna. And there's no more to it than just the manna falling and them gathering it. But there's a, there's, a, there's a picture of manna. And manna was called corn from heaven in the book of Psalms. Um, it was directly from God. And it was the gift of God. And Jesus said in John, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead, but they didn't eat, that, that manna didn't bring death. And that was not what brought death to them. They could eat that manna and live. Uh, but it was their flesh, their rebellion, that brought death to them. The manna did not. They ate that manna and they lived. They didn't need anything but that manna to live. But it would only give them <coughs> It went on to give them temporal life. It did not give them eternal life. That's why he said they ate man in the wilderness and they're dead. It didn't give them eternal life. But you know it gave them temporal life. Um, and did you know that we right now are gathering manna? We're gathering manna. Maybe you gathered some here tonight. I trust you did. Uh, but let me tell you something. Don't think you're going to get that manna and say, that's it. I'll keep this manna. I don't need any more. I don't have to have any more. Uh, no. Eat the manna. Go ahead and eat it. If you got a revelation from God tonight, if God touched you, if God helped you, eat your manna. Eat your revelation. Eat your word. Go ahead and digest it. It won't do you any good to put it in the pantry and just keep it and say, I got, I got a truth, but I'm not going to use it now. I'm not going to practice it. I got it, but I'm not going to practice it. I'll, I'll save it for a rainy day. No, you go ahead and practice or eat or do or carry out what God gives you because the same God that had you here by predestination tonight let you sit in this Bible study by the foreknowledge of God, 
is going to give you more manna. Because if you don't, and you put what you have on the shelf of your mentality and never use it, never digest it, never consume it, worms will eat it and eat into it. And worms is a picture of the flesh. And the very thing that was given to give you life, you can't eat it. It will go from you. You'll have to throw it away. It'll be no good. You will throw it away. See, you, you, you can't eat it. it. It doesn't bring life. Israel could not eat except what God gave them. Give us this day our daily bread because there's more tomorrow. He will keep feeding us. But well, Andrew, you have your hand up. If I eat it, how do I practice it? Say it again. If I eat it, how do I practice it? I, I, my ears are stuck up. You receive a revelation. Uh, you receive manna. Eat it and practice it. How do I eat it and how do I practice it? If I eat it, how do I practice it? All right, that's good. Uh, that's a good question, and you know it, but you're asking me to give, give it so good for the class. Um, why don't you give out what you have on there? Just go ahead. I'll, I'll follow. I'll share it. Well, because uh, I know it's in your experience. James said, uh, "Be not as that man that beheld his face in that glass, went about his business, forgetting what manner of man he saw." He said, "You don't be like that man, as that man." He said, "You be a doer of the word." Yeah. And right now, with Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, 13th chapter, he said, "Right now we're looking to a dark glass." But then we'll see face to face. We'll see face to face. Uh, in other words, we'll be able to see more clear. And if we take the word of God and apply it to our lives, be doers of the word. I put I put in that that revelation, that man. I'm eating it, and I'm putting it to practice in my life. And. Uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to catch no stones. I don't want to cut nobody's, I don't have no, no axe to, uh, I've heard Brother <coughs> Jones, I've heard Brother Zonneville said, I have no, no axe to, uh, how do you say it? Grind. Grind. Amen. So he said, uh, but I want to edify. Amen. I want to be an example. I want my life, we live in a glass house, and I want my life to be an example. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees, God does did not hate them. But John the Baptist told them, he said, bring fruits of repentance. They needed that tree in their water. They needed that tree to sweeten their lives, the tree of life. In each and every one of us is life. And that's what we need, is to preach that word of, of, of the sweetness of the Precious love of God. I and uh, but not to cast, you know, use the eggs or but just preach it with love so that we might be able to put it on, take it in, and put it to practice. I don't wanna be uh, I don't wanna be a, a carnal because the council blessed is the man that walketh not in the council, that's a carnal man. And if I give counsel advice to anybody and it's out of the carnal mind, my, my water has not been sweetened. My, my life has not been sweetened yet. I don't have Jesus. I don't have the Holy Ghost in me. And I'm going to give advice out of my own carnal mind. The blind will lead the blind, and they will both fall into the ditch. Good. I, I enjoyed that, Brother Adolph. That's true. Um, in short, and adding to, I can't, I can't digest the manna without I practice the truth, because that's the living life it gives me. And if I store it and don't practice it, the worms can get in, the flesh can get in and destroy it. But if I practice the truth, then the Word of God can be as it should be in my life, and I will be profitable unto them around me. Um, I've enjoyed this Bible study, and I am thankful. In fact, I enjoy them all. When I get a chance to be in this Monday night, 
<clears throat> to me, I enjoy all the week of activities of the church, but there's something special about this Monday night. Amen. There is something special about Amen. this Monday night. We just get into it, and we get into the Word of God, and I gave you the picture tonight of the tree, the waters of Merah. So you be sure that your waters of Merah don't stay bitter because you can't drink it. Get some sweetness. Let the tree of life get in there and let the tree of life sweeten and you up and tenderize your soul because you're working on, uh, you're working on the building of an angelic house that you'll abide in forever, eternally. That's what Naomi told them when she returned to Jerusalem. They said, Naomi, we're sorry to it. We're so glad to see you. And she said, don't call me Naomi. Mm -hmm. Call me Mara because I'm there. Yeah, yeah, she used that, didn't she? Um, but she was bitter. She had to come back with Ruth and get her <coughs> water sweetened. She was bitter. Naomi was bitter. Lost her husband, her two sons. Out of the will of God. Out of the will of God. Left, went over to the Moabite land. And she had to get back into Israel. And she had to let the tree of life and Boaz get back in the crop field. And let uh, let uh, God's word take place. And, and that beautiful picture of Ruth and Boaz and, and the lineage of Christ. You can see the lineage of Jesus Christ right in that picture. That's another one of those treasures of the old, the book of Ruth. God bless you tonight and go with you, and may the Lord keep your waters sweet. Praise our God. Amen. Mix and mingle one with another, and the Lord bless you real good. Real good. Choir time, and so we'll let you tomorrow in the choir.